Um, hello, everybody. Can you hear me well? Yeah. Uh, okay. Firstly, I want to thank the organizer for the the scholarship I had to to be able to attend, and I talk uh, also on transport data and the initiative we have in the World Resource Institute to promote uh, open standards and op open data. Um, for transportation systems and uh, a strategy we have to create a, a resource center for this data and experience and uh, methodologies. So um, in the World Resource Institute, we work on sustainable development. City, um, urban planning is one of the main area of the organization. I'm from Mexico office. And so there we work on Latin America and a lot of issues, but uh, specifically on transport, um, public transportation. So um, on one hand, we have a, a growing penetration of smartphones in, in the whole world and uh, also in the developing world, in the developing cities. Um, this, this situation impacts in a lot of um, data, big data creation, with a lot of potential which we are not using for now um, totally. And in the other end, uh, there is a growing need on, of information for transport travelers and for planners. In, in the developing world, um, local government has a very low technical capacity, very low capacity to create data, and with the data, uh, the planning capacity is low too, um, with a very bad impact in um, transport conditions and, and in the de um, development of cities. So what, firstly, what do we mean by transport data? Um, for, to have a, a useful um, data system, we need maps, uh, digital maps of routes and stops. Um, in the same way we, we have the presentation before. We need speeds, variable speeds, depending on the moment of the days and uh, depending on the days of the week and the weeks of the year. We need timetables for scheduled services and frequency of the services and uh, ideally real-time location of the units of transport, uh, vehicles and real-time traffic and congest congestion updates. And what is uh, transport open data? Um, ideally too, and they are public uh, feeds and uh, is, is easily accessible feeds uh, using standard format um, to, to allow the government and private application to access very easily and to allow um, private to uh, innovate with new technologies. So I present some tools, uh, generally open code, to create the data and to use the, the, this data. Transit One is now um, it's a mobile app, app with a based app for visualization. Um, this allows to create the data in the bus, so you, tr you track the route and the stops georeferenced um, in the transport. It has, it has derivated to a lot of new mobile apps now. In Mexico, we have a, a Spanish version named MapMap, Map, developed by Codeando. Um, Transit Mix, now Remix, is a, a web-based application where you can draw the system. The city of the Cairo used the application to map uh, the whole system, and it's based on OpenStreetMap 2. Um, and you have a lot of um, open code technology to convert OpenStreetMap uh, format or shapefile format to GTFS. So in Mexico City, we adapted uh, GTFS editor to, um, for a government tool. And finally, the use of standards, and that's a, a good point for the GTFS, uh, help, helps um, the development sector to innovate, to be able to create a lot of technology and a lot of products like printed maps because they can benefit from the same conditions and clear conditions to, to develop. 
And there are um, several repositories of data. And Transit Land is now closed, but it was one of the main repositories with GTFS Exchange. Um, it had 300 cities uh, transport system. Uh, Transit Feeds is another. And in general, with these, re these repositories, we can see a gap between northward and southward. So uh, in WRI with the MIT, the World Bank, in, and other institutions, we are working to promote uh, participatory mapping in the south world, where we have uh, a big technical difficulty. Is, um, that is, uh, in these cities, we have informal transport system, so it's not so easy as a, a formal transport system. But we, we are trying to, to create a platform to share experiences, methodologies, open code technologies, and data too. Um, another very important point, and we are not talking a lot of that in this event, is that one of the use is for the travelers and the other use is for planners. So the GTFS format and its um, easy structures have, uh, have allowed to create tools for planners. Um, why, is, why is it important? Uh, Again, the very low technical capacity in developing countries um, make uh, the local government um, unable to, um, to work uh, easily with GIS uh, software. So um, this tool, the accessibility tool or open trip planner made by Conveyor, an American um, startup, and uh, WRI and the World Bank, uh, it's like a um, simplified GIS, and it helps to make some network analysis very easily um, to understand, to observe the accessibility in a city through the road system and through um, transport system with GTFS format. So, um, okay, it uses this data. You can upload shape files of population and opportunities. With your opportunities, we mean uh, employment, um, equipment, like health equipment or educational e equipment. And we can um, test the performance of the transport system to access to this equipment for the whole population or for se se specific areas in the city. So it's very important to help to plan both transport, uh, transport system and housing or equipment um, uh, location. We also, with this type of analysis, we also can um, make indicators, performance indicators in the city, benchmarking, and um, ev evaluate sustainable development goals. I'll show very quickly some maps. So um, in this one, it's Buenos Aires. Uh, it's a comparison to accessibility with, through public transportation and automobile. This map of Mexico City overlap the, in, red, in red color the um, population density and the isochrons of main accessibility by um, public transport. So we can see that large areas are not covered by the system. And this, this indicator helps to understand what's a part of the population who access to employment or um, which part of the labor market is accessible for the population of the, the city. It's um, Buenos Aires too. And in this case, we help the government of Puebla in Mexico to plan to test uh, the location of a new route of transport, um, looking at the impact in the higher accessibility that this route allow or not allow. Um, we can see there it's, um, the impact is not so good, so they can move the line on the, on the tool. And these studies are from other institutions. Um, where they can make a benchmark of the, of the accessibility of cities through the public transportation. Uh, or this way, it's a ranking of uh, United States cities according to their accessibility to job by 
public transport again. So, <coughs> so we pretend to form to, to build a platform um, what would be a resource center where we try to centralize data so it can be a repository but um, mainly we want to share to make networks between uh, organizations who have um, mapped who have worked with communities to map the trans the system transport in the south southern cities and uh, we also want to share methodologies open code technologies to do that um, Etc. So um, we we specifically interest on informal systems, and um, yeah, um, the the philosophy of uh, of this platform would be south south cooperation, open governments, and social innovation, and uh, making a link with local government to help them to use and take uh, advantage of this type of data and makes a link with the technological sector too. That's it. Thank you. And uh, we, I invite people who have participated to this type of uh, operation to connect with us. Thank you for the presentation. Questions? Thanks very much for your presentation, Celine, and for the research that WDR did. Uh, was it WRI did? Um, in regards to the accessibility of cities, do you have recommendations of what people could map to be able to identify that in OpenStreetMap? What they can map? Yes, so given the data that you found around accessibility, do you have any suggestions around what we, what, what we should be focused on in terms of mapping to be able to kind of improve the data set? Yeah. Um, the point is a little complex because uh, the technologies to help um, travelers to have a good information of the whole system to be able to, to move uh, um, in a performance way needs to have the complete system in the same moment. So the better way is to organize massive mapathons in certain moments of the year. Um, ideally, it would be each year to have the, the update of the whole system because informal systems are moving very fast. Lines are disappearing, lines are appearing all the time. So mapathons are, are the best way, I think, Maybe, uh, maybe a good way. The question of the updates of the system is uh, is a large debate, but maybe a good way is to have first a massive mapathon and uh, updated by um, case by case um, users editing from one line that has disappeared or one line that, that has changed the route and. Um, using the apps developed specifically for creating the GTFS or, or OpenStreetMap format um, transport system. Um, so the app is made to track the route and the stops, mainly. Other type of data is the load by this type of application that are um, how, m how many people is um, taking the bus and is leaving the bus, for example, and taking photos of the bus to have uh, the, um, the destination, and um, they can ask, it's, it's, uh, it's important for the GTFS format, they can ask to the driver the frequency of the service and the hours of the start and the, the end of the service in the day, morning and night. Uh, you mentioned the open repository for GTFS feeds, uh, transit feeds, and as far as I know, there are four active rep such repositories, including transit land, uh, which is facilitated by Maps and, and some others. So why a new repository, and did you think about uh, combining repositories and making I can't hear very well. So. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, there are many open, uh, at least four active open GCFS repositories, including Transit Land by Mapzen, by late Mapzen. So, uh, did you think uh, that maybe joining the forces with other repositories might help your cause? And are there any plans for that? 
Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, so it is not to atomize uh, the repository, but giving more visibility because non non specialists uh, don't know GTFS formats just uh, at that, that this point. So uh, repository can be mirrors or something. Yeah. Hi. Uh, okay, it's not a question, but more a precision because uh, we discussed already together about this uh, creating a GTFS first and then trying to uh, recreate the data in OpenStreetMap after all, or creating the data directly in OpenStreetMap and then generate a GTFS feed. Um, so I'm, fr I'm from JungleBus, and we 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 are we strongly believe that uh, creating the data in OSM first is the the best option. Uh, but I just wanted to. Uh, to publicly uh, like uh, discuss about uh, this, um, these two options that uh, could be uh, good or bad depending the um, uh, the context and the, the places where where we map. So um, uh, we are uh, developing this uh, OSM to GTFS tool, and uh, if guys you want to to join to uh, to help us to develop that, um, you're very welcome. Yeah. Uh I think it's a good debate to have, and I invite people who are in, interested in this topic here to maybe have um, continue the debate with Jungle. You have a study um, on that, so we could continue online maybe. Hi. Hey, face. Celine. <laughs> um, I just want to say to everybody that tomorrow at 10.15 we will have a buff about those and other topics, so um, please come. Thank you. Hello. Uh, Hi. So, have you thought about other formats uh, than GTFS? Um, because have you thought about linked data, for example, to publish uh, the transit schedules? How? Linked data? Linked data. No. No? Because it would be like GTFS is a one data dump per transit agency or whatever. There are better ways nowadays to publish this kind of data. Just. Yeah. You haven't I look at it? I look at it. <laughs> I think um at least in Latin America, in Mexico, um really I, I insist the technical um level in local government is so low that uh, it's important to have a non confusing um discourse toward them. So we try to talk about one format in particular, the, the um, easiest to use, the clearer to, cl clearest to understand. So we, we work with the GTFS format, but it's, it doesn't mean it's the only format, no, it's the best. Yeah. Okay, thank you for the presentation and the thank questions. You.